let's fire this. Oh yes, that definitely does work. Let's do it again. All right. Hi, today we're going to take a look at how to align a laser like this. This is a laser with a plain plane resonator, which means that it has two plane mirrors. And because of the geometry of this resonator type, it is notoriously hard to align. So we're going to take a look at how you could do this within, you know, a home shop like this. By the way, this is an NDAC laser, which I've built a few weeks ago. And this is not the final setup. It actually does work, but I'm going to make a video about this once it's actually finished. So I assume that if you are watching this video, you are kind of familiar at least with resonator types and lasers in general, but I will quickly go over what these um, elements are here. So we've got a mirror in here, which is adjustable using this kinematic mirror holder. Then we've got the pump chamber, which contains the laser rod and a few flash lamps, two of them actually. And then we've got a back mirror, which is also adjustable. And then we've got a lens, which is, you know, doesn't really do anything with the laser cavity itself, but it focuses the beam to get higher power densities. So let's look at this in a schematic and see how we could align a laser like this. All right, so I've prepared a few graphics like this to explain better how this will work. So we've got the resonator in here. We've got the high reflector. So this uh, reflects all of the laser light. In this case, it's uh, 1064 nanom nanometers and a yak wavelength. And then we've got the OC, which is the output coupler. And this has about you know 40 to 60 percent reflectivity, so to let some of the laser light through. And this beam actually here is not the NDAC beam because it's infrared. We can't really see it, and therefore we can't use it um, to align the the laser cavity. It is pulsed too, so that wouldn't be of much help. It is actually a Heaney beam, so helium helium neon laser beam, which is about 633 nanometers. So we can see that just fine. So what we can use is we can shine a laser uh, in here. We'll talk about this mirror in a few moments. And the reflection of the laser beam that's coming in back will be used to align everything. And so we've got the laser beam coming in here. And we're going to use this mirror here to actually align the laser, the, the alignment beam in this um, general direction. It doesn't have to be critical, but just that it's in the right ballpark. And then when we go from here, I'll just take a slide from the top like this. So we've got the helium neon laser in here. I'm pretty sure a diode laser of sufficient um, intensity would work as well, but I've got a helium neon laser, which is collimated. So that's good. And we shine it through to this mirror. This reflects it to the OC, and we can see that those are not aligned. So they reflect the light, or just a bit of this light, back onto this pinhole here. And we know that this whole resonator is aligned when the spots here, as you can see here, are actually on top of the pinhole, like this. And you may actually see interference rings with a good um, collimated laser but I don't think it's very necessary. And the thing that makes this setup so precise is that this distance here is, in my case, about four meters. All right, I think that's enough for the theory. Let's look at how this is actually done in real life. All right, so this is the helium neon laser source that I've got. It's quite crude, but doesn't really matter. It works. Um, we've got a helium neon laser source that's not collimated. That's taken from a... Um, barcode scanner, I think. Then we've got a normal lens, I think it's a biconvex lens, from this soldering helping jig. And we can plug this in. And I think you can see, yeah, there it is. All right, and then you can, well, I can use this uh, clamp here to use a little plate like this. That's just a bit of plastic here and that has um, a few holes drilled in it with different diameters. And that's used for the pinhole. I think that's about 
two millimeters, if I remember correctly. And then if we look to the left, let me just realign the camera here. Here we are. Here's the laser, and we're looking down the workshop to this mirror here. And um, this actually reflects the light into the laser cavity. So let's look at this next. So here we are. We've got the laser coming in here, and it's being reflected off this mirror. This is a, just a normal um, polished molybdenum mirror, which is used for CO2 lasers. It's just what I had around. You can use probably any mirror. But this does have the big advantage that it's adjustable. So we can actually um, align this laser beam here to be quite parallel to this uh, table. I should also add that the distance from this mirror to the table should be roughly equal to the distance from the laser mirrors to the table. And you can see that I've marked this exact distance that I was talking about on this well, piece of wood here. And if I just move this piece of wood over the table, sorry, I'm blocking the laser beam here, you can pretty much exactly see that it's not aligned to the table very well. And I can change that by aligning the, or by changing the alignment on this mirror holder, which is another great, great advantage of this design or this method. Okay, so as you can see, this is now aligned quite well. This is now parallel to the table. Now we can start sliding this laser module into this beam. Okay, as soon as we're confident that the laser beam makes it through, well, right through all the components, we can actually turn our attention to the outcoupler side of the laser. All right, so as you can see, I've got this set up and here's the main beam from the laser. And I've got the paper here set up so that it's just about on the edge so we can see the two, two dots that are reflected from the mirrors. And of course the one that's moving right now, because I'm moving the OC, the art coupler, is going to be a lot brighter because the laser beam is just directly reflected and does not have to go through other components like the laser rod itself. You can actually remove the laser rod and adjust it uh, without having, having the laser rod in place. Its positioning is not very critical since the end faces of the crystal are very parallel. But for me, it works like this, so it doesn't matter. And now the other one, the other dot moves if I adjust the HR, so the uh, high reflector. And we are going to just roughly align these dots here and then move back to the pinhole a few meters away. Because right now the alignment is so bad that the pinhole would not have the laser dots on them. Okay, I think that should just about do it. Let's look at the pinhole and see if it's, you know, roughly in position. All right, we are the laser and you can actually see the dots on the piece of plastic. Now, if you don't see them, you can A, um, dim the room lights even more, or B, you know, use a piece of paper and search the dot in the room. You could imagine that this beam would be just a bit to the left and you wouldn't see it on the paper, on the uh, piece of plastic, sorry. And you can just, you know, scan the room using a piece of paper or something and search the dot. All right, so I'm going to go over the uh, laser now and leave the camera rolling so you can see how this looks on the uh, pinhole. You can see that there's quite a lot of interference going on, and this is exactly what you want to see. Now, of course, you can see this quite well, but I'm about four meters away, and this is, you know, about two centimeters across this piece of plastic, so it's not easy to see. So it's quite an iterative process. You just go to the laser setup, adjust it a little bit, go back and see whether it's aligned or not. But, you know, it doesn't matter. It takes a few minutes and then it's done. All right, so this is, I think, as good as it's going to be. And remember, this is about four meters away from the actual cavity, so this is very, very precise. 
right, let's test this out. I've got the capacitor bank hooked up and I'll just turn on the voltage. All right, let's fire this. Oh yes, that definitely does work. Let's do it again. Here's the crater of the laser beam. As you can see, it left quite a deep hole in there. Of course, this is very thick steel, so it's not gonna make it through this very thick pipe, but it does indeed make it through razor blades. So as you can see, I've already shot a few holes through, the, through this razor blade and it actually does make it through uh, three consecutive razor blades. So it's quite a strong laser. But let's talk about this laser more in the future video. All right, thank you so much for watching. And if this video helped you, please consider giving this video a like and maybe even subscribing to the channel. All right, thank you, bye bye.